Hey folks, it's Dave. Uh, I put something up on Twitter that talked about why I kind of like Vim, why I like using it for Markdown. And Patrick here asked a question that was basically like, what does my Markdown setup look like? Why would you use Vim for that instead of VS Code? Uh, so I figured I'd just make a quick video to kind of show off some of that stuff. Um, I might walk through uh, some of my repo. So for those that don't know, I work with a team that builds this Elastic UI. Um, repository, which is basically just a big open source repo for how we build Kibana, how we build a lot of our Elastic uh, property stuff. It's a big React design library that is way too big at this point. It's got so many things in it. Uh, take a scan of it, but th that's what I'm going to be looking through when I go through the code. So the big thing with Vim, um, you know, most people think of it as this, right? It's just some <laughs> confusing thing with a bunch of key commands that they don't know. They always get trapped in it. They don't know how to exit it. You know, colon Q, you get back out. Um, the really nice thing about Vim is that it's fairly modular. And when you look at uh, what separates it from something like VS Code, VS Code itself has extensions, but VS Code itself is very large. It's an IDE by default. And then you add extensions to kind of modify stuff. But for the most part, you're getting all these updates along the line um, that are going to continue to change things, um, you know, as you keep moving. Vim is very much starts with pretty much nothing and you have to add to it. And so, for example, um, when I'm talking about Markdown in Vim, I'm talking about a bunch of plugins that I add to it. So I add this Vim Markdown one. Uh, which, you know, you can tell just from the documentation how many different options there are within it. I also use something called Vim Pencil, uh, which is a uh, another plugin that's just meant to improve the pure, like, writing experience. Like, if you are using Vim as a writing experience mechanism, um, then this helps on that side. It does stuff, for example, to, uh, you know, get away a lot of the markdown cruft that you might see. And then uh, last one that I use is this one called Goyo, which basically just focuses on the writing. It, it, it forces like certain uh, column widths to things. It gets rid of all the, you know, the numbering that you might have around a typical file um, and just makes that part really pleasant. So from within Vim, you know, the biggest thing for me, and again, my Vim is set up my way. It doesn't look like anybody else's Vim. In my Vim, I, I have like the equivalent of like a command T or, you know, the go to anywhere palette that VS Code has. Uh, and so, for example, I can just type in here like MD and it's going to start giving me MD files. And the one thing that you'll notice is that it's also giving me previews on uh, the right side. Um, I'm doing that through a combination. The program on the left is called FCF. Program on the right is called BAT. And all BAT does, and it might be good to show bat just separately this bat just takes a file uh, and sort of outputs it um, and it can do the syntax highlighting and it, it, think of it just as a read only format of, of what's there and if you combine that with you know vim's uh fcf auto search within it it means that you get those kind of preview things that were showing up in here which means i can do something like say okay i want you know a tsx file right and start looking uh, individually at those. Doesn't work so well with some of our uh, elastic documents because you see we have to put so much licensing on top. Um, but pretty fun. The other way that I tend to normally get around a document is, or a large repo, is I'll just use like a search in project, which you might, you know, normally have something in VS code. The nice thing about Vims is it's extremely, extremely fast. So I could start typing in tooltip, right? And it's gonna give me everything within that uh, file system. And not only that, it's gonna bring it up any single time that it shows up uh, individually within those files. So this is, you can see it shows up a million times in the change log. I don't wanna see that stuff. I wanna see maybe, you know, TSX files. And I can just start seeing that stuff. You'll see on that right side that it's highlighting out the specific words as they get matched. And that's happening, you know, two separate places within this document. Uh, but I can do that preview and you can see every single time um, that that word is showing up. So super fun. And this is a way that if you wanted to, you could batch process again something. But this was about Markdown. So uh, why don't we look at... 
uh, a markdown file that we have. Yeah. So let's pick, I don't know, maybe our contributing markdown file. So this looks like a markdown file. You're like, Dave, what's the big deal? Um, you know, this looks pretty normal to me. I mean, it's nice that it has syntax highlighting. Um, the cool part um, that you can see on this one is I really like, for example, one of these, and I believe it's pencil. Um, it is giving me ways to keep a uh, single line, uh, single line, I guess, documents or, you know, large, you know, very large lines that you're seeing here with this number 11 line. Uh, and it's breaking them up into what would be more considered like readable chunks, right? So rather than me having to scroll left and right, it's going to auto format that for me. Um, that's super helpful. And it's also respecting like Vim's up and down so that it's actually normally where I'd be jumping from line 11 to line 12. It's actually respecting that within it. Really neat. Uh, other stuff, line seven, you can see as I'm moving on to this line that it's actually uh, hiding and then exposing the actual link in there. Uh, if I look at most markdown, like imagine this markdown down here, uh, think of like how much cruft would be on there uh, as I'm doing this. It gives me like a really, really nice way to see this kind of stuff. Then the, the real big kicker that uh, you'll be able to see is that Goyo app, which we've got over on that left side. Uh, this gives me a way to look at a document in a what I would consider very optimal, readable way, um, where it removed all the lines uh, that are there. It just focuses on the text uh, that's assigned, and it's still applying that syntax highlighting and that writing uh, system that's in here. Uh, moreover, as I make edits, you can see that it will add those um, asterisks and stuff as I need it. Uh, that's mostly why I really like um, this side of it. Uh, another one is like I could be on this development guidelines and be like, what's that page like? I can just hit enter on it directly. That one doesn't have one, it seems like. Uh, sorry, if I were to pick this one. Uh, it's going over to that individual Markdown file, and I can jump from page to page. You also notice you're like, "What is Vim? Why are there no tabs? I don't see any tabs. Like, how do you, how do you navigate around your stuff?" And Vim has the idea of buffers, uh, which is basically like those files are always open, right? So we've got our normal uh, thing in here where we can see like the files that actually exist. But to be honest, most of the time, the way that you're navigating is you can just tab sort of back and forth. I'm using my backspace key and it just gives me a way to cycle. So for example, let's say that we wanted to go to that, I don't know, one of those tooltip TSX files, right? And we're in here, we're in our document and then we're like, you know what? No, I want to go back. Uh, I can just hit that button and it gives me a way to switch back and forth. And what you realize if you're not using your mouse all that often is that this is a much, much faster way uh, to move through your documents. Uh, the other big thing, the reason why people love Vim is mostly because of the movement controls. Um, not only movement, but just editing documents is, is really nice. So as a good example, you can see near the bottom of the page, there's a word default, right? And let's say I wanted to get there. I could use my mouse. I could use my up and down arrow keys. Or Vim has like some nice plugins that... Uh, give me very quick ways to move around that document. And so I can type, for example, FF, and then I'm going to type DE, and you can see that it's highlighted all the places on the document with things that have DE. We see define, default, define, develop, development, design, right? I want to go to the default one, which is that E. And so suddenly I'm there. Uh, if I want to change that word, I can type CW, and it'll change word. Uh, to say, what was this? Default. <laughs> um, but it lets you really, really jump around and do that kind of uh, fun stuff. If we were to go back to our tooltip file that we were in here, where this comes in extremely handy is if you are uh, working within XML style, you know, uh, code blocks like, uh, for example, React. If I wanted to change everything that was within 
this tag of output. I could just type CIT and that does change inside tag. And suddenly I can start typing my content. Um, it makes this stuff very, very fast, especially if you're somebody who is a hack like me that's like just primarily working with like HTML and CSS. Uh, it gives you ways uh, to do those edits very rapidly. Uh, same sort of thing that you can have happen on lines where you can just like delete individual lines however you want, select whole lines, delete them. Um, there's all kinds of stuff um, that you can do there. That's a very, very, very brief uh, talk about Vim. There's so much to it, but uh, from a markdown perspective, um, you know, and how I like doing this editing, I think along with Goyo, with that pencil thing where it's going to hide, you know, a lot of these things, it just be, makes it a really pleasant experience for me. You can probably put it together if you use VS Code, but you're not going to get like the navigation fun stuff uh, that you get with them. Anyways, hope you enjoy it.